Hi, dear viewers. Uh, this is again Mr. Nando Samba Lundula Tenedikuru uh, presenting a new topic for our today's presentation. I need to say that this presentation is in fact a response to the overwhelming requests I received concerning punctuation marks presentation. Indeed, we cannot talk of written communication without including punctuation mark. So today's presentation is titled Punctuation Marks, not for grammatical functions, but versus meaning, semantic. That is how punctuation marks affect meanings. They have their grammatical functions. For example, a full stop will indicate the end of a sentence. Also in abbreviations, we use full stops after each letter, and so on and so forth. I want to open a bracket while talking about punctuation marks. These are symbols. They are in number between 12 and 14 for our English classes. And so we use them mostly for grammatical functions. But besides that, we also have to use them for meaningful usage. Indeed, you can say usage or usage. Both sounds are acceptable. The good news about these 12 or so punctuation marks is that most of them, that is, we exclude commas, most of the remain, all the remaining have two functions on average. For example, a hyphen can only be used in two cases to mark, to form a compound word, as well as to cut you know, words in syllabic part, important. Those are the ways we are allowed to cut an English word at the end of the line for lack of space. We can only cut an English word in syllabic part. Any other cutting would be ungrammatical and therefore a grammatical offense. I close the bracket. So, we are talking about how punctuation marks can affect the meanings of words and phrases and even sentences in English. Of these 12 or so punctuation marks, we have chosen only five to talk about how they affect the meanings. We have already explained the reason. Now, we will talk about full stops, we'll talk about hyphens, apostrophes, and we shall also talk about question marks and a comma. These five do affect indeed uh, the meanings of words. Just now, very recently I was talking about how hyphens are used to form compound words. As students of language, we need to know where these words are coming from. That's called etymology of compound words. So, etymologists assert, tell us that the initial stage of writing a compound word, it must be hyphenated. After some time, it's written, that is hyphenated the compound. After some time, a number of years, it will be written as an open compound, meaning in two words without a hyphen between. And then the final stage of a compound word is when you write it as a solid compound. So we have three types of compound words, hyphenated, open, and solid. That's how a compound word history does evolve. But then again, another bracket I have to open. It doesn't mean that all the compound words that were initially hyphenated should be later on written as open and then solid, no. We have special cases, but this is the general history of compound words. So we take, for instance, hardworking. This should always be hyphenated if we mean working very hard. We come to fact finding. It will also be always hyphenated. Ice cream, we have two words to refer to one meaning, and that's an open compound. 
Granddaughter, it's written as one word. We call it solid compound. Let me reverse a, a little bit concerning the compound, uh, the hyphenated compound and the open compound. If you take the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary, Gold Digger is written still up to now, the 10th edition of Oxford, as a hyphenated compound. But if you take Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary, 4th edition, Gold Digger has moved to the open stage, open compound stage. And there is no likelihood that one day it will become a solid compound. If it does, that would be the exception that confirms the rule. The same thing, well-fed, if you are well-fed, uh, this entry in the Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary is still at the initial stage, which is hyphenated. But when you come to the Oxford Advanced Learners, it is written as an open compound. Whichever you choose, I don't think examiners will penalize you. That's what I wanted to say. Then I insist that we have affixes. By affixes, I mean prefixes, infixes, and the suffixes. Prefixes always occur at the beginning of a word. This is not a word, it's a prefix, self. As you can see, there is a hyphen there. It can only be used in combination, and that means it can never be an open or solid compound. Elect, not a verb, but a prefix. You know, it is preceded by hyphen, it's a suffix. It can only be used in hyphenated compound, when you say governor elect, president elect, grammatically there should be a hyphen between the two. No hyphen is a different meaning altogether. It's a wrong actually, it's ungrammatical. Let's get the, the infix, come, come, which means with, you know, most of the words we've brought from Latin. Come is an infix, there should be something before a prefix and a suffix. Like when you say, I work in my bedroom, come study. So that bedroom is at the same time where you do your official duties. So that's the history of those hyphenated words which will never change, I beg to submit. So you can see that we have to be very careful when writing uh, the English words as compound, whether they are hyphenated, we should do so. If not, we follow what the dictionaries, the recommended dictionaries will recommend. And so we have to do exactly that or else there will be a problem with our examiners. So, state of the art. There is one more thing I want to say. If state of the art is a noun, there shouldn't be any hyphen. But if you want to describe something to mean the latest, it should be hyphenated. Just like you say, mother-in-law, father-in-law. You cannot write this without the hyphenation. Part-time job. The job is not full-time. Full-time and part-time should be hyphenated always. This is how the language operates. Stepmother, stepfather, half-brother. This would be open compound. Two words carrying one meaning. When I write deadline as one solid compound, I mean the last day to submit something. In inside, we have in and side. The two create one meaning to mean in the interior of something. Middle brow, middle brow is this low brow, high brow. No, this is middle brow. It's also a, high, a, a solid compound. There is one thing here concerning self, the prefix self. It should always be, I wish to submit, that's why I've written it in capital. There is a special meaning I want to convey here. If you go to YouTube, educational site, you will find my fellow, even educated native, uh, you know, writers of English, writing self-introduction without a hyphen. That is not just acceptable. You know, it is just because we are human beings. I am sure that on second reading, they would have corrected it because they are highly educated. If you look at the content they are presenting, it's highly advanced. But the spelling in their title, self-introduction, they have omitted, some of them, not all of them, the hyphen, and that is not good for the learners. It's a bad exposure to the learners who might copy that pattern into the exam 
you know, papers, and then lose marks. New age, open compound. No one, always open compound. A stalking house, always open compound. Sweet bread, there is nothing like bread here or sweetness. This is the pancreas of a, a sheep used as food. Uh, food. So this sweet bread is always written as a solid compound if you refer to the meat, the pancreas of a sheep. If you create, if you write it as an open solid, I mean a, a, an open compound rather, sorry for that slip of the tongue, if you write sweet gap bread, it would mean the bread has got a sugary taste, something like that. So we, ma we must make the difference in meaning very, very, very clear to the readers. I have just mentioned, caution here now concerning compound words. From the number, these are not, uh, uh, compound numbers. There is 20 and there is one. From 21 up to 99, if you don't hyphenate, marks will be deducted from your papers because they must always be written as hyphenated compound. It's two numbers expressing one meaning. That's why they're like that. Again, number two, fractions. If a fraction is used as an adjective to describe a noun, it ought to be hyphenated. I bought a three-quarters bed. So, I have hyphenated a three-quarters because it's an adjective describing the type of bread. I mean, of bed. Sorry for the too many slip of tongues today. That's human nature. No problem about that. Look at this other example. Don't settle for a two-thirds deal. Two-thirds is describing the deal. And if we are the Cambridge, they will say, there, not the long E. All right? So that's how hyphen uh, does affect the meaning of these words. Uh, just a minute. Ooh, where are we? We're there, now here, now there. Here we are. Sorry for that eh? hiccup. He was one, his was a one-sixth payment, one-sixth payment. One-sixth is an adjective describing the payment. A half-backed education. Still, as you can see, these are all what we call attributive adjectives. They are used in front of nouns. That's why they are called attributive adjectives. Because predicative adjectives will never stand in front of a noun. That's another situation. Now, the same fraction used as nouns, as you can see, have no hyphens in them. Rich people always travel first class, no hyphen. This is a first class compartment, adjective. First class must be hyphenated, and so on and so forth. So here we don't need hyphens because they are all nouns, naming words. We want to include also all phrasal verbs, you know, look down on, verb, adverb, preposition. All the phrasal verbs in English are what we call open compound because although they are three or two, they carry, they express only one meaning. Also, many other words that consist of more than one word are also called solid compound, like to outdo, to outlive. My wife died five years ago. I'm still alive. I've outlived her. There is out and there is leave. This is a solid compound because they carry one meaning. Never is a word. There is a, a word. Let, nevertheless, upward. Two words. Underneath. Two words. So those two are what we call uh, are what we call solid compound because they are always spelled as one word even though they comprise more than one word in their spelling, okay? So, we are through, I suppose, not yet. Now the practical exercises on hyphens. The theory is, let me say, open the bracket, please. This presentation would be an attachment at the end of our presentation. So you will have time to go through the content slowly, at, I mean, at your convenience, you know, and uh, it comprises 1,480 words. 
Now, what is recommended for the reading speed for an examination, the recommended reading speed for examination is that each candidate should be able to read 120 words per minute. So if we divide 1,480 by one, 120, it's about 12 minutes you'll be through this paper. Examination recommend, reading recommendations. Oh my God, okay? Now, now the practical aspect. I want to show you first of all to say, when you see SA, it means simple adjective, just one. When you see CA, it means compound adjective. N is for a noun. That's what it means. Let's get the first one. Number one, it's the same phrase, 500 year old coins. Coins is the noun. This is CA, compound adjective. Five is a simple adjective, simple adjective. So it means here, 500 coins each aged one. That's the